Okay, it looks like we have everybody now. Excellent. So uh, we'll call the uh, April 12th special uh, select board meeting to order. We've got Flo Smith, Brad Town, John, uh, John Quinn, and myself. Uh, I don't believe Dave's here. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda, Vince? No, sir. Any public comment? Hearing none. Uh, we're about to have the hearing for the community rating system. Do we have anybody here that wants to speak to that? Uh, I should have a motion to open public public hearing. Oh, okay. So that sounds uh, like you made a motion, Brad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. A uh, motion to open the public hearing uh, for consideration of changes to the Berlin Land Use and Development Re Regulations, particular to Section 2202H1G. I second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. And then... Uh, are we going to get an explanation on uh, the FEMA community rating system from you, Vince? Yeah, sure, certainly. Uh, so the current language of uh, 2202.H1G is constructed with electrical heating, ventilation, plumbing, air conditioning equipment, and other service facilities that are designed and or located so as to pre prevent water from entering or accumulating within the components during a flood. Um, so basically, um, what we're talking about, right? We participate in FEMA community rating system as a class nine municipality. Uh, class nine status enables uh, Berlin property owners to purchase flood insurance, a 5% discount off premiums. Um, so the, the staff, mostly Tom is working with FEMA uh, to upgrade Berlin to a class eight municipality, which would basically double their discount on premiums to 10%. So just for uh, rough numbers, I believe it was last year's numbers, uh, the residents paid 7,477 um, with that 5% discount. So that would basically double to $14,954 uh, for that our residents would, would save um, by going up from a class nine to a class eight. So the language change to section 2202.H one G to make class eight status possible would read as constructed with electrical heating, ventilation, plumbing, air conditioning equipment, and other service facilities that are designed and or located at least one foot above the base flood elevation. So as to prevent water from entering or accumulating within the components during a flood. So the change is the additional wording of at least one foot above the base flood elevation. Okay. So, I mean, we talked about, I do remember talking about this in our previous meetings. Um, did the, what the planning commission worked on this, Tom, is that, or was it strictly you? How do we come up with this? The planning, planning, the planning commission met oh, a couple Saturdays ago and held a public, their own public hearing and took testimony um, at that time, there was nobody attended, so there was no testimony. So they forwarded to the select board uh, their, their report uh, recommending that the select board adopt the language as was read by Vince. Right. Now, what, I mean, what is, is there, is there any disadvantage to the municipality for this or? I don't think so. Um, we've, we've entered into the uh, community rating system about six years ago, uh, and which got a about a five percent discount. I've heard of no issues um, being a participant in the in the CRS at a five percent. So I, I can't believe that getting a ten percent discount would have some other things paying on it that we're not aware of. Yeah. So, so only basically. Basically, the only thing would happen is if you if you include this language, uh, any construction in a floodplain or 
flood area would have to take and suffer the expense of raising it that one foot above base flood. That's a FEMA requirement now, Brad, and that's in our zoning regulations. This spells yeah. out uh, the, the electrical systems and such. Yeah. So this may be a silly question, but how does that impact somebody if they're, obviously they wouldn't qualify for the discount if they didn't have the option of bringing like base level, base floor outlets above the, that, the, like, letter, like above the FEMA grade level, correct? That's that's correct, and they, 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 they wouldn't they they would not they wouldn't get a permit from the town of Berlin in the first place. Right. Our zoning doesn't allow for construction in in the flood zone at all, even without even with flood insurance at this point. It, it's interesting. There's t there's two there's two components of the the uh, flood hazard area. The, the first one is the floodway, which is where the actual you know, the river flows and, and that. So there is a, a very strict prohibit, uh, prohibition on development in the floodway. The, the one uh, that folks are more common with, familiar with is a flood plain. And so uh, there are regulations do allow development in, in the flood plain, but you have to build any structures so they are flood resistant, being at least one foot outside of the, uh, the uh, one foot above base flood elevation. Can you give us an example of a location where that would be, where we may um, have construction? Well, you think about uh, some of the, the mobile home parks in Berlin that were adversely impacted by by Irene. Um, the uh, Weston's mobile home, for, for example, um, uh, they any new structure there has to be um, have at least a one foot. It's called freeboard of of above base flood elevation to to allow the, uh, a structure to be placed there. Hey there, this is Mike Strasberg. I can give you a personal example, Justin, because when I rebuilt my garage. Um, I'm just barely in the floodplain myself, and so um, I had to get an engineer to make sure that the foundation and the floodgates at the bottom of the garage and everything met that floodproofing rule. How did you feel about, how did that impact your construction? Um, it, it added a little bit of time because I had to get the design work done and, and pay the engineer. Um, it really didn't impact me as far as the final result. I mean, the, the basic difference is I've got a, a concrete knee wall around the bottom of my garage as opposed to the studs going all the way to the deck. But aside from that, it's, uh, you know, it's fine. Okay. My, uh, my, my question actually is um, the change to the CRS that's proposed, I just wanted to confirm that that is new construction only. It doesn't affect existing structures. Can you confirm that? That's that's correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I couldn't imagine not being able to change an outlet in like my building in Barrie that's in the floodplain. So, any any changes to the structure? Um, anybody else have anything? Thank you, Mike. By the way. Yes, thanks for asking that question, Mike. That was a good one. Yes, you certainly. You bet. Thank you. Thing. How does the board feel about continuing with this thing? Or uh, since Mike was the only person we had for public comment, does anybody from the board have any additional comment? That's, no? I, mean, I, think all we, I think all we need, Justin, now is, is if the board agrees, is a motion to amend. Um, Move to a move to amend section 2202 H1G to read constructed constructed with electrical heating ventilation plumbing air conditioning equipment and other service facilities that are not that are designed and or located at least one foot above the base flood elevation so as to prevent water 
from entering or accumulating within the components during a flood. I second that. Thank you, Brad. Uh, any comment? I guess just a procedural question. Um, don't we, are we supposed to close the public hearing and then take that up in the regular select board portion? Yeah. We, uh, I don't think it really matters, but. Um, they're going to do it right. Right. So. Not to make Brad say it again. I, 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 I can read. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> All right. So should we uh, move to move, move move to close the public hearing? Second. All right. Any comment? Procedural question. Shouldn't we take that motion off the table before we do that? I don't know. Quinn, you want to chime in on that? Give us some input on that. Yeah, you technically would. If Brad, you would just withdraw your motion for the moment. Be more than happy to withdraw my motion. Okay. All, right. all right. Any additional comment? No. Hearing none. All those in favor of adjourning the public hearing and convening, reconvening the select board, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Brad, did you have a motion? Let me reinstate my motion. <laughs> Can we get a second? Second. All right. Any comment? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Oh. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, anything for roundtable, anybody? That's on our agenda. Vincent, no objectives. Um, yes. Well, yes. As the new highway liaison. I would like to mention that uh, Crosstown Road is now open. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I feel I, I, next year with that, if I'm on the board and we have discussion about that, I, I think that I've never really thought about how many people and businesses were impacted by the closure of it. So I really think we need to consider that, uh, trying to be able to maintain it. Um, anything else? No, exactly. Nope. Set. So, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Any comment? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you all. Enjoy. Yep.